Another type of flow meter is a rotameter. The orifice meter, we had a change of area, which was constant. In this instance, a rotameter is a variable area meter. If we look at it from the side, it is going to be a tapered device, which has gradations on the side for measuring off from it. It is then going to have a float inside, which is going to be pushed up by the flow of the water, which comes in a thinner end at the bottom and out at a thicker end at the top. We can then read the marks off the side and we can get the flow rate from this meter. If we look at an easier version of this, you'll see the smaller diameter at the bottom versus the bigger diameter at the top when we're looking at the side view. When we look at the float itself, we're going to look at a cut through from the top. And when we look at the top, we will see that we have the area of the float, which is going to be in the middle. The total area we were going to define as A1, and the section in the middle, which forms the donut like shape, is going to be area 2. Area 2, depending on where this float is sitting, is going to change, as is the total area. So if the float is all the way at the top, there is going to be a larger area of the annulus whereas when it's sitting at the bottom, there is a smaller area. In my diagram, I've drawn it as a very exaggerated taper, but in real life here is a rotameter, and you'll see that from the bottom, as we move to the top, there is the float, and by the time we get to the top, there is no real difference in this diagram in terms of the diameter. On the inside, though, there is a very small difference, otherwise this would not work. In order to solve this equation for rotameters, I'm going to take the equation as we derive from the orifice plates video, and we're going to start with the equation as we had from that video, which you can find as already uploaded. Using this equation and substituting the values for A2 and A1 for the area as we have in the rotameter, we are now left with equation 1, and we can then replace the P1 minus P2 with a delta P1, which we define as the volume of the float multiplied by the density difference of the float and the fluid, multiplied by G divided by the area of the float. After substituting equation 2 into equation 1, we're left with equation 3, where you can see the change in pressure term has now been moved into the top here, and we have the A float terms, V floats, so this is all now in terms of a rotameter nomenclature. One of the differences here is that when we are looking at the area 2, which was area of the annulus, please note that we need to use the wetted diameter in order to find that area, where the wetted diameter is the difference between diameter 1, the total diameter, and the diameter of the float. When we try and solve this equation, we again notice that we have a CD value, as we had in the orifice plates example, and we again have a situation where we have 1A2 on the left and we have 1A2 on the bottom. So hopefully you will realize that in the same way as orifice plates, you're going to have to iterate to solve for that A2 if that is the unknown in this equation. And again, we are going to need a graph to solve for CD. This time, however, our CD value, or our CD graph rather, is a little bit simpler to use. We again have the Reynolds number on the x-axis to find the coefficient of discharge, which is our CD value on the Y. However, this time, we only need to look at three different scenarios where we have a rotameter with a float shape either designated the letter A, B, or C, and there is a picture of each of these. Once you've got whether it's A, B, or C, we calculate the Reynolds number, read up to the different value, and then to the left to get our CD. Please don't forget that, like with the orifice meter, we are going to often be looking for a velocity, and unfortunately, in order to get the Reynolds number, we are going to need the velocity from rho v d on mu, so that's going to be an unknown velocity, so we are going to have to guess some value of CD, work out the coefficient of discharge, go back again to recalculate the velocity and the Reynolds number to check, so in the same way as orifice meters, there is going to be some sort of iterative process that's going to happen here.